This was the phone in the Super M video and it's real. If you haven't seen it, yeah, basically it does this. This is my LG Wing review. Good afternoon, you beautiful people. Welcome to Isa Das Tech, where we do tech in your real life in style. We're doing the LG Wing today and it's a pretty curious phone because it does this. I'm not even exaggerating when I say that there are so many questions about this phone. Like, I posted a TikTok about it, flipped it, and reversed it, because it's your primitive effect, yeah. come on. And it literally blew up. It got like 750,000 views and more than 100,000 likes. If that's any indication, so many people are curious about the LG Wing. If this is your first time seeing this device, I know that you have so many questions. I'd advise that you check out my first video on this phone where I answered so many of them including what that form factor is for, how it feels in my hand, and what cases are available for this phone. I'll link it up here and down below. Anyway, we're doing a review of this today and what I have here is the actual retail version now. For your info, because I know you guys are gonna ask, this phone goes on sale today in South Korea and on October 15 in the US. Those are the first two countries which will get this device. Right, on to the review. The LG Wing is a very pretty phone and it's not black variation. And if you were wondering, this is how it looks like with a case. I spoke about how that case works in the other video. It works great as a normal phone. It's a little heavier and also she thick. The thing with this phone is that if you see it, if you hold it, you would actually think that it was just a normal phone until when it's out on this form, it's actually pretty balanced. Holding it like this feels very comfy. And like I said in my unboxing video, this swivel is actually very satisfying. There are two OLED displays and both look good. They're very consistent. One is just cuter because it's teeny and one's bigger with a slightly curved edge. But otherwise, you don't really feel any difference between the two in terms of performance or visuals. I mean, LG is the same brand which put a notch on the secondary screen phone case just so users get a uniform experience out of the two screens, so... Honestly, this is one smooth phone. And as with LG devices, I love the level of customization you have on the interface. You can change fonts, you can change accent colors, you can add these cute always on display screens, and those are always my favorites. I am currently loving this Isa Does Tech always on display. And also there's this very extra feature where your lock screen shows you what weather is ongoing in your area. And it makes my phone look wet on rainy days and it's so cute. And also I've had a panic attack about my phone getting wet so many times because of this. I mean really, one of the drawbacks of having a phone like this with so many moving parts, it's not gonna be waterproof. But I still love it and I love this feature. Performance is good all around on the Snapdragon 765G. Some people will be all like, why couldn't they have put in the flagship processor? Why didn't they put the 865 or the 865 Plus? But just like the Reno 4 Pro, the Vivo X50, the LG Velvet, I personally do not notice a difference. Long story short, this processor is good for my everyday use. I said my everyday use, guys. It may be different if you're like a legit superpower user, but personally, I'm good. And yes, that processor also means that it's 5G capable and no 5G does not cause COVID. There is no headphone jack on this phone, which is something I actually don't mind. But LG has been known to keep those headphone jacks. So if you're one of those LG fans who does not want jack hitting the road, hit the road jack. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> you might want to keep that in mind. There is also LG 3D sound engine on here, which is supposed to give you a fuller 3D sound, regardless of what earphones you plug in or what Bluetooth headphones you connect. This thing has different settings according to what you're listening to. There's voice, there's music, there's cinema. And though I did not expect it to make a difference in my listening experience, because like I've mentioned before, I'm not really that discerning when it comes to sound. I'm not that big of an audiophile. Like I listen, I listen, but I'm not very picky. Holy wow, it did make a difference in the music I tried listening to when I 
tested it, it did make everything sound fuller. There are two speakers, a bottom firing one which seems to do most of the work and another one here that peeks through when you swivel out. This is how it sounds like and this is my LG Wing unboxing actually. So the LG Wing, it's a phone that swivels out to reveal a secondary display. We're checking it out in this video. <laughs> One thing though is that there is no face and lock option on this phone. There is an in-display fingerprint scanner but there is no face unlock. I find that weird. Like I get that there's a pop-up camera for selfies on this but there are other pop-up selfie camera phones that have face unlock. It just like raises when you swipe up and then it locks and then goes back home. But maybe, just maybe, LG's gearing up for a future where everyone's considerate of others so everyone wears face masks so they don't accidentally accidentally infect anyone with COVID in this pandemic so we don't really need the face unlock. In that case, I'm okay with no face unlock. It feels just like a normal phone that at first I actually forgot to swivel it out because I just totally forgot that that the form factor existed and that I could use it. It's just the way it is though and this form factor it's a very capable phone already. But we don't just want capable do we? We want to be wowed. First things first though, when it's a T, it's a different mode. Once you're on here, you need to set it up to your multitasking needs. On the main screen, you swipe up to add apps you want on this main homepage here. On the secondary homepage, you also have to enable the apps. You can't access these apps from the second screen unless you go into settings to enable them. Also, you can set up dual apps to run together instantly, which is pretty convenient. And it's actually nice because you basically customize what you want to see on the main screen and the second screen when you run them. My personal favorite use cases for this form factor would be be typing up scripts like this because I can see what I write on a wider display. Actually, if you're adventurous, you can even set it up this way with the LG trackpad. Yes, that also turns into a trackpad. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I also like watching videos and scrolling through Twitter. Or, well, yeah, mostly it's watching something and being on another app that I mostly do like chat or pull up stuff about the video I'm watching to read. And yes, some apps may get weird on that smaller display. Like the weirdest I saw was on Netflix with just the screen cut out, but most apps just shrink to size and or leave awkward spaces on the side. But also, LG has actually partnered with app makers to make sure that this form factor is utilized. Ray, for example, is literally a watch party. You have a video on the main screen and the chat on the second screen. So you can watch videos with other people and talk about it. Also, I made some friends here when I clicked a Super M showing. They're so cute. Then there's also Asphalt 9, which gives you decked out visuals with the second screen. Now, me being a player whose main strategy to win would be to press any and all buttons I can, that second screen didn't really help in terms of winning, but it was really cool. For those of you who are more strategic when it comes to game playing, it might actually help. One thing though is that I found that I tended to hold the phone like this when unfurled on the thicker part. Like I just found it more balanced and comfortable. You can use this thing so many ways like here or here or here or here but holding on to the phone this way needs some getting used to because this is a pretty thin area and i'm just honestly scared that i might break it i'm not used to holding something that thin and it being a touch screen but i mean i've been on it and it hasn't broken and i've had no issues bottom line is i haven't broken it yet and i'm not the most tender when it comes to touch in my last LG Wing video, I showed you the special camera modes you get from this form factor. Let me tell you now that I am enjoying those features very much. This part will be very quick because I will be tackling the cameras of this phone in a separate video in a separate vlog test, so stay tuned for that. I will say though that the gimbal mode shoots really smooth footage. Amazingly smooth footage. They can suffer under low light situations though, but still. Can you run? Because I'm gonna try um, the follow mode. I will follow you. 
Takbo! Doon nga! Takbo mabilis! One, two, <laughs> the gimbal joystick thing is cool because this was me actually panning to shoot everyone in my living room. And this was me not moving but being able to shoot everyone in the living room. I still haven't figured out how this phone does that considering nothing moves. The gimbal modes, however, are only to be used with your rear cameras and when the phone is unfurled like this. But I'm pretty happy that that pop-up camera is a 32 megapixel shooter. That means LG gave the selfie camera power and you can shoot perfectly capable TikTok vids on selfie mode. And that is what I did. So, awesome stuff aside, there are some things that this phone can improve on. Remember when I said no face unlock? What I find actually awkward is when the phone's locked and then you swivel out, this thing is still locked. So it's either you type in your code or you do the fingerprint thing on here for it to unlock. I mean, I know there are many moving parts here, but that thing is sort of always a little awkward to me versus if there's face unlock then you should be able to swivel it out and then unlock with that oh even better maybe an option for face unlock to be a thing only when you swivel out the screen and speaking of swiveling out sometimes the switching of modes take a little while for it to happen i mean in a world where we watch micro videos and swipe to the next one when the first three seconds don't interest us that can feel like forever and another thing if you like gboard or flexi as your keyboard you gotta let go man most of the second screen stuff works only on the lg keyboard so you gotta use that Battery on this thing lasts me a day or a little over a day with my data telling me that one, I do a lot of TikTok. And two, that my screen on time is usually over six hours. Note though that I don't really look at screen on time as something that's indicative of how the phone performs with battery because different people have different use cases and also that battery performance data was done without data use because I've been at home and I'm not leaving this house until absolutely necessary stay at home. With the cord and charger this phone came with, it went from 0 to 100 in a little over 2 hours. Conclusion So I actually like this phone because despite what it is, like wings and all, it works well as just a candy bar phone. Meaning you can use it like a normal phone in that original old form factor and you'd be good. Except for the slight thickness and additional weight. So here's the deal. Usually when you add something crazy and do something to compromise the original candy bar form factor that people are used to, you get pretty strong opposition. People like what they know. Don't believe me? Check out the comments from the first Samsung Galaxy Fold versus the comments on the second Samsung Galaxy Fold. And what was the difference in those two phones? Mainly that the first fold had an issue with use when it comes to the original folded form factor. Folded, this phone can be used like any normal phone. But as much screen as this phone has when it's not folded, it makes up for it when it is folded up like this because look at those borders. Versus the second one that basically worked like an original form factor phone when folded. And to anybody that scoffed at the first Galaxy Fold for not having a good quote-unquote smartphone experience when the phone was closed, well, that was literally addressed in the Z Fold 2 with a much bigger display on the cover. Obviously, this LG form factor is very polarizing. But for someone who likes multitasking, it's honestly pretty cool. For very specific use cases, it is very useful. But then you can go the opposite direction too. If you think this thing is pretty useless, then then you might not be the target market. The thing with this phone is that even if that's the case, one can always argue then just don't swivel it out and use it in this original form factor because it can do that. Either way, one thing's for sure. You'll always get a reaction every time you do this. That is it for today's video, you guys. Let me know what you think about this phone. Stay tuned because I will be doing a camera vlog test on the LG Wing. Let me know in the comments section what shots you'd want me to try. 
If you want to see how I use all this tech on a daily basis, you can find me online. That's at Isa Does underscore. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and also on TikTok. Until next time!